Alright, so this is what I would consider a really ugly roofing. <laughs> um, because of that, I decided to make it into a roofing rehab project. So I picked out some sari silk and some fleece and some BFL roving and uh, I think that's faux cashmere. I don't remember. <laughs> And then I just split the roving into pieces by color. I wasn't, as you can see, super aggressive about this. I wanted some nuance in there. Um, and then blended it up with my add-ins and created a separate color. So there are a lot of different things that I could have done at this point. Um, and I wasn't totally sure what I was doing with it all the way up until I sat down to spin it. <laughs> <laughs> so here as I'm carting, there's not a lot of direction. Um, I was thinking maybe a gradient or a self-striping or a collection of semi-solids. I wasn't sure. So that's where I was at with the actual carting. And I show you all of them except I believe the brown. I know one of the colors I skipped. So we, we shall see which one that is. But while I'm doing this, um, I wanted to say some of you probably have noticed that I'm not uploading quite as many videos as I did when I was doing weekly uploads. Obviously it's not been weekly, but I hope that you are appreciating the longer, more in-depth videos that are of a higher quality. Um, I felt like I was really pushing hard to just crank out content, 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 and because I'm pretty much a one-woman show, um, that really decreased the, I guess, length of project that I could do. Um, my comfort zone has always been like stupid, crazy, and complicated and long. <laughs> um, and when I'm trying to do weekly stuff, uh, that doesn't work. Oh, see here, I'm double carding. I didn't think it got a good enough um, semi-solid with the add-ins. Um, Chunky add-ins is the bane of my existence. I really like well-blended add-ins. Now you can do this by pre-blending them into a littler piece of roving and then blending that in, but I didn't obviously do that. So anyhow, um, I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that the upload time might be slower, but hopefully you're really appreciating the more complicated content. For example, in this one, I show you lots of different techniques in one video because that's how my mind works. Um, I, I do best that way. So yeah, I think I'm going to turn on some music for a little while and let you guys watch this. Though before I do that, I wanted to remind you that I do have a music only version of this video and the archive of all of the Patreon videos um, are linked in both the YouTube description and the Patreon description of this post. So there are tons of different ways that you can hit that. I organized it better because lots of you were saying that you were really having trouble finding past posts. So I got you. I fixed it. I solved all your problems. Hopefully. <laughs> so I was going to say that I'll catch you after this is over, but uh, I'm looking down and basically the carding is almost over. So <laughs> that's what you get here with Grace. Lots of rambling. So as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward uh, separate the roofing, double card, add some add-ins kind of daily wop. Though um, I don't know if you can see that fiber painting off to my, I believe that's the left. Uh, I make those, they're unfelted fiber sandwiched in glass. So if anybody wants to see me do one of those, let me know. Occasionally I get questions, but it's not really in the spinning wheelhouse. Um, my next video is going to be on core spinning and wrapped core spun bubble plaid goodness. Uh, heavily inspired by the Shelob yarn from Woolwinch. So if you want to get a head start on homework, you should watch her video because that's what I was inspired by. However, now we are on to spinning. Um, here I am trying 
a little bit of Langdara and uh, mostly I kept my Langdara attempts off of the camera after that because that was uh, not sexy. <laughs> So, I pretty much just spun this a regular single. Um, again, at this point I still wasn't totally sure what I was doing with my life. I knew that I wanted to keep them semi-solids and, and probably do something interesting with the plying. But I was kind of thinking maybe a Navajo ply at this point. I was as spinning this kind of trying to picture all the different plying techniques that I knew and which ones were more interesting to see. Like, you see me two ply all the time and a single obviously is boring. And an in ply is kind of like moderately interesting. <laughs> so that's where I'm at with these. So I think I will really truly this time turn on some music and let you watch me spin a single because we've we've talked about that we've extensively talked about that in the past two videos how i spin roving and how i spin bats these are obviously bats but i do apply some roving comb toppy type knowledge to them so if you're interested in a deeper look into that and you're new here on patreon a welcome to the spin weekly patreon family and b check out that archive that i mentioned before so be quiet now. Oh, never mind, never mind. I'm just gonna leave this in because this is hilarious. Every time I say I need to be quiet, uh, a new thing happens. <laughs> so now I'm done with the single and I'm trying out the Lazy Kate on the Polywog and um, not that successfully. I did decide to go with an end ply because I just wanted to roll with it and see if that gave me any better ideas. The situation of the, <laughs> the lazy kate in that location uh really kind of threw me off and i left it in so you could watch me struggle with it <laughs> about this time i also realized that uh somewhere in the move the spring part of my tensioner uh disappeared so it's just a bolt tightened block of wood that's doing the tensioning so I'm pretty sure that's killing like a lot of the nuance that's involved. See, I'm, I'm dorking with it now. So I need to procure another spring. But again, I left all this in so you can <laughs> appreciate my struggles. Uh, so it turns out my moderately interesting in play turned into quite the, the interesting uh, logistical problem here. I think a lot of people talk to me and they're like, I've had my wheel for a really long time, it feels like, and we still haven't gotten really well acquainted. And I, this is a new wheel for me. I've only been actively spinning on it for a couple of months. And A, my dorked up tension probably has been causing me lots of problems. But B, I keep finding new things and I feel like it's pretty awkward to spin on it, not because the wheel is anything less than a genius of engineering, but because, at least for me, trying to learn a new wheel is always kind of like trying to take a new lover. It's kind of like dumb and awkward and weird and confusing, and how do we even communicate? Um, so yeah. This is an end ply, and the actual plying is not that interesting. The struggle with my wheel is really what turned out to be interesting. So I took it off of the bobbin because that was driving me bonker doodles. Um, and you know me, I generally try and avoid plying from the bobbin anyway. So, yeah. Also, during this spin, I realized that there are two notches for my drive band on the wheel itself rather than the flyer thing. So that was really interesting and also made a really large difference. The other thing that I think is interesting is the orifice hook, if you watch carefully, it's facing down when it's in the neutral position. So. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm dyslexic, but that has also been throwing me for a loop. So there's lots of learning curves to this wheel. I love it. Um, the treadling mechanism is incredible. The changing out the bobbins is so good that I even venture to switch bobbins. 
However, <laughs> we're still in that awkward phase. Okay, so here we are on to the red, orange again, um, <laughs> which contrasts sort of like a Muppet with my red pajama pants. <laughs> I also wanted to note that this is 200% speed, um, and I wanted to know if uh, you like it this way. Usually I do 400, pick up 400% speed, but um, some of you like the slower speed, so let me know. My major worry was I wasn't going to have enough things to say to fill up this situation, but... <laughs> As previously noted, that doesn't seem to be a problem. I watched this soap making lady and uh, when she makes soap, she ends up talking about various wildlife in her yard and uh, she has a fairly sizable following and lots of people are deeply emotionally invested <laughs> in the ducks that live in her yard. <laughs> so I feel like that's what this is going to become. <laughs> I need to have ducks move into my yard. I, I found a tick on my child's head this evening when I was putting her to bed, so hopefully that's uh, not an omen of the f type of animal that I'm gonna talk about in upcoming videos. <laughs> um, though, I suppose speaking of wildlife, that reminds me that Tour de Fleece is coming up, and uh, I don't participate in Tour de Fleece ever because my life is so crazy. I can't. I can't commit to those things, but I have been in the long term wanting to do a raw fleece to, oh, we're getting into the ply stuff. Hold on. Let's pause a moment to talk about what we're doing. So I decided I was going to do a really intense coil spun. And while I was doing that, um, I used the hand spun, um, that I just worked on and I had trouble with my core unspinning and I came up with some some handy hints. You can kind of see me struggling with it but if you don't actually let that twist go which is what I do every time I stop I let the twist go and you can see it just unravels so I'm trying to like twist it back on my leg and it's not going that well. So I found as I went that if I hold on to it and don't let it pop out, it goes better. However, I don't, based on this experimentation, recommend using the same yarn that you are using for the coil as a core. It's just not going to be as structurally sound. Um, this is probably going to be donated to my mother's weaving pile, um, so it doesn't need to be that structurally sound. However, the actual core coiling technique, core coiling, <laughs> that was punny and I didn't even mean to, um, is solid. So you hold the yarn at a 90 degree angle and I find that if I kind of feed it on there, that helps get those really good coils. And you just push it up. Now don't push it so far that the different coils like hop onto each other. And there's a bit of a special sweet spot to how tightly, uh, twisted you get those bubble plies because if you don't twist it enough they just kind of all flop on top of each other and it's sort of like a car car crash but if you get it too tight you can't get them to move and it just gets stuck and over twisted and it's super obnoxious so you want to hit that goldilocks period and I think it's pretty obvious. Um, once you've done it a couple of times, you should be able to see right away. And here's my special trick. If I hit a place in the yarn that's like crazy thin for some reason, um, I just run it up and down like that. And when you actually work with the yarn, it's gonna look like a really cool anomaly and not a mistake. So the other thing I love about this technique is if you spin fairly irregularly like I do, um, see here I spun it too tight and uh, because the middle part there was quite thin and then the edge was a little fatter. Also I'm struggling with my core on spinning. <laughs> um, again, I left all of this in because I wanted this to be a really uh, accurate representation of how this went and the struggles that I had both with the wheel and the different 
techniques I chose. So I'm uh, literally going back to my roots with some unscripted, these are mistakes that I made kind of videos. But on the subject of the wheel, because I'm used to a bobbin lead wheel, I have a really hard time um, doing a start stop kind of technique like this and then getting it to go on the bobbin without over twisting it. And I feel like that should be pretty intuitive, but for some reason it was kicking my butt. <laughs> I'm having the hardest time with that. So here I decided that I wanted something fatter. So I didn't really aim for a thick or thin. Um, I just wanted to spin a really fat sort of art yarny yarn from this super smooth <laughs> bat, which if anybody's tried to do that, it knows that it's actually kind of harder than you would think. I feel like a lot of people who come to traditional are like, I tried to use my super smooth like four times carded alpaca unicorn fleece bat to make a funky art yarn and it was really difficult and I was like yeah that's gonna be painful what you need is something chunky and lumpy and probably what you consider a train wreck of fiber prep that is the sweet spot <laughs> um, so yeah here again you can see that I knew that I didn't want to over twist it but because I do kind of that far away drafting thing, I was having trouble getting it to go on to the bobbin, but also not over twist or pull too tight. So that is a continuing theme throughout this video. My trying to figure out how to get stuff onto the bobbin without over spinning it. And again, I really, really think perhaps it is, well, A, a combination of my beginner with a flyer lead wheel. That changing wheel styles always takes freaking forever for me. Like, it's so obnoxious. I really empathize with people who just get fed up with it. But also my dorked up tension thing. That's probably not helping my cause at all. So here I start to get a little bit more intentionally thick and thin because I'm trying to see if I can speed it up like my drafting. See if that helps. Uh, spoiler alert, it, it didn't help. <laughs> but that was my thought process here. Um, also, you can see that I moved my drive band to that other notch in the wheel. And uh, I was really mind blown. I'd never seen a wheel that had multiple notches on it. Well, I've never actually met a flyer driven wheel in that I've spun with one. So the whole concept is pretty new to me. So like you can see, I'm not really trying to do a thicker thin um, or anything consistent. I'm just kind of pulling clumps out and seeing what happens. Um, I'm also not paying a huge amount of attention to making it balanced because or I suppose maybe I'm paying a huge amount of attention to trying to get it to balance and it's just not working. <laughs> I'm a glass half full kind of a person, so I choose to think that I was uh, casually struggling with my intake and twist and tension situation without worrying about it, but I was kind of fussing. I wasn't stressed, but I was fussing about it. Anyhow. So once I was done with this one, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do with my plying. I wanted to do a bubble ply and I also wanted to try a coil. I was kind of trying to imagine if the coil would be much different with a fatter yarn. And again, I'm using that same yarn from before as the core because I figured um, I was gonna run with that and see if I discovered any new insights along the way rather than just bailing on it. Um, I learned a surprising amount of information by being way too stubborn. <laughs> but that look is what I was originally going for. Trying to see if I could just lay on the coils directly without doing much pushing. Mm, it mostly ended up 
kind of being over twisted like I talked about before if you get it too tight on there they're hard to push up so I wasn't too satisfied with that um, but again then I was trying to figure out about the intake and kind of figuring out if the look is gonna be dramatically different with a thicker yarn I've done coils but not since before I wrote, well, before I wrote roving, so a while ago, <laughs> pre-marriage, so probably like five years ago. Um, and at this point I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm kind of done with that. Um, I'm beginning to flirt with a bubble ply. So here soon I'm gonna switch to a straight up bubble ply situation. But I did get a fairly sizable amount of this coil. And again, you can see I'm trying to work really close to the orifice, but it's not intaking so quickly. But again, there's that Goldilocks situation because you don't want to, you can't work too close to the orifice because you want to get a fair amount built up so you can push it in. <sighs> eh, I felt like this was a exercise in patience, honestly. But here, I believe I break this core, no? At one point my core either breaks or I break it and I have to redo it. Um, and I just tie a knot and coil over it, which is how you deal with a broken core. Um, and you can see, like there I switch hands. You can switch hands back and forth. Um, it doesn't matter what hand. The main thing is you want to kind of hold it at a pretty good 90 degree angle. Also, you can see that once again, <laughs> trying to get this all wound out of the bobber is a hot mess. I do not know why I'm having so much trouble with this. Like intellectually, I know how to do that. Uh, so I was real frustrated. So I decided to go ahead and just two ply this together. And I included the footage because I felt like it was important to document the entire experience from top to bottom. <laughs> you can see our uh, puppy in the background there. I guess he's not a puppy anymore. When we were first married, uh, my husband, who is a dog person, talked me into getting a dog, and then we couldn't take him to Hawaii. So we're back in the mainland. <gasps> it's almost two o'clock in the morning right now. But uh, we're back in the mainland, so we have him. His name is Stitch. And uh, he's uh, not quite the same personality as he was before having dwelled with a house full of old people uh, who don't really move around that much. <laughs> so it's kind of been a struggle to integrate him and Violetta. So I'll, I'll keep you posted. There you go, there you go. The dog is my duck equivalent. So again, here we go, we have this bubble ply situation going on and I freaking love how bubble ply looks even if I obviously can't get it to go onto my wheel but <laughs> when you have a thick or thin um, I guess the thick and thin a bubble ply is hands down the coolest looking yarn in my opinion the same with a coarse bun which is why my next video that I'm about halfway finished spinning now is a coarse bun bubble ply freaking love Core spun bubble ply. One of the early videos I watched was of Steph, I forget her last name, of Loop Yarn, I believe. Um, she does mostly crazy, chunky um, art yarn and these interesting custom carded uh, center pole fiber thingies. Um, I should probably link that in the description below. <laughs> but she did a video series with the Ashford, Ashford Country Spinner people and it blew my mind her bubble ply. I was in love since then. So this was really enjoyable. I really had a blast with this technique. I, I just love how much visual impact it has. Though occasionally if you don't get the quiet the correct uh, ratio of twist between the corners, you get kind of a flat thing going on, and that's not too sexy. That's what happened there. So I tried to fix it. 
and my thick and thin yarn didn't quite have enough twist in it so there wasn't much I could do about it but if that's happening that's why is your thick and thin doesn't have enough twist to hold its shape so again watching this is kind of painful because I see all of the times that I'm struggling to get this stupid yarn on the stupid wheel uh, I apologize if you're just like your eyeballs are bleeding trying to watch the so the final yarn, I totally went with nuts. I'm intentionally doing thick and thin right now um, because I wanna try a beehive situation. Um, and this is the tiniest, I, the stock bobbin for the polywog. And I felt like the pegs weren't quite tall enough to work super great with the uh, art yarn volume but again i feel like my main problem is the stupid intake again you can see me struggling with it um, i'm gonna need therapy by the time i'm done with this <laughs> ah, i had actually before watching this thought i would just finish up the next video before i bothered to order that coil but i think maybe i should uh, i should get that coil on the way hopefully that makes a big difference because uh, i don't think uh, you guys want to see me struggle this hard anymore that's that's not what you come here for <laughs> i also honestly feel like some of these voiceovers are more confusing than not and the 200 percent leaves a lot of room for me to ramble on and i guess i'm feeling a little self-conscious about this voiceover i don't know if it's helping or hindering and i also feel like uh if I sped it up, you wouldn't have to suffer quite so uh, viscerally with my intake problems. It looks so much accuracy. There's so much accuracy when it's only at 200%. You were suffering right along with me. <laughs> However, right there, you can see I did kind of a wrapping beehive. Generally, a beehive is a thick and thin coil. Um, so when you get to the thick part, it just makes a big plop, and then the thin parts are teeny plops. However, I personally love bubble playing, as we may have recently visited. Um, so my favorite version of the beehive technique is to do these like back and forth coils. So they have a lot of interesting texture, and there's a variation in their length because I don't spin my thick and thin really consistently either. Um, I'm not even going to comment on this. I'm just going to move on like it's not happening. <laughs> so yeah, I like to do the bubble ply in the middle. I think that's a much more visually appealing situation, but also it's a lot more fun for me to spin. So again, if you find a technique that you really love, don't feel nervous to Frankenstein them together or bastardize them or tweak them to fit what you like. Like maybe you really love this technique, but chunky yarn uh, is something that you hate to look at or hate to spin or a combination of the two. And you wanna do it in a really small yarn. A, you won't ever have to fight with your intake um, like I'm trying to do here. Um, though, Look at that sexy magnet action. That was so easy. Ah, my goodness, I love that. So don't let this situation be interpreted as I hate this wheel. I freaking love this wheel. But we're still in the uh, arranged marriage stage, I guess. This thing is like, uh, I was really in love with like Frida who already knew how to use flyer lead wheels. And then uh, mom arranged a marriage with you and you don't know what you're doing and i'm not into that and i'm like have some chocolate take some coils <laughs> so here's the coils that i was telling you about originally i decided that i wanted to show you the more traditional approach approach and i feel like this looks like sound bites oh here's where the coil breaks or the core breaks and i tie it back together um, again, this is not a structurally sound yarn. I would not recommend doing this for anything that had needs to be strong. So again, because it's all coily, I can kind of hide that pretty 
pretty effectively than not. But do you see what I mean about it looks like sound bites? <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Um, and especially when you have like a really chunky, locky art baddie thing going on, that can be really beautiful. I want to revisit this technique with a super chunky art bat in the future and a better core. So <laughs> I guess the, the moral of this uh, video is that this is a bunch of different ideas executed really poorly. <laughs> and I hope you take inspiration from what I'm trying to show you, not necessarily the implementation. But I continue to put it up because, A, like I said, the ideas are still very valid and hopefully super inspiring. And also tons and tons and tons of you comment and message and email me um, at least once a week, kind of feeling like you're the only fiber artist who really struggles. So I wanted to dispel that myth with this video. However, it, it is pretty painful like worse than I imagined. I was supposed to be honestly like tastefully, ah, I struggle too, yet still end up with something fabulous as to you. But instead it's like, oh, train wreck, train wreck. Good, good, it's really good, but my, what a train wreck. <laughs> but we have come to the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm really thankful for all of your ongoing financial and emotional support here on Patreon. So I like your faces and I will see you next time. Bye.